Coming up on episode 168 of Creative Writing, I'm talking about why your email list might not be growing. I can't go back to sleep, it's almost light. These restless thoughts have kept me up again. Hello and welcome to Create If Writing. This is the podcast for you, a writer, blogger, or creative who wants to build an online platform without being smarmy. And I'm your host, Kirsten Oliphant. I am so glad that you are listening, whether this is your 168th time or number one. Welcome. Welcome. I'm really excited to talk about email, one of my favorite things. And every time I say email, I hear it in the uh, strong, bad voice. So if you guys are... uh, Oh, it's not even strong bad. Who says it? It's in Homestar Runner. Email. Uh, but it's in that part. Now I have to go watch Homestar Runner. So here's my, I've been leaving like these little uh, Easter eggs. That's not even the right word, but that's what I'm going to use in the podcast episode. So if you hear this and want to tag me on Twitter with a Homestar Runner gif and it's in, it's in the email. It's in Strong Bad's email, but he email. That's what I hear every time I say email. Just so you know what's happening in my brain, that is what's happening. And if you don't know what Homestar Runner is, get out your Google and go find that. Side note is over now. We're going to get into email and talk about why your list might not be growing. And it's going to be a quick episode. There may or may not be show notes. If there are, it'll be at creativewriting.com slash 168. I think I'm going to get them up there, but I'm hitting that part in the summer where I'm just saying, y'all, the podcast is killing me. Sending out weekly emails is killing me, and I just want to write books. So if I kind of disappear for a while like I did last summer, you've been warned. I've warned you. This is your warning. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I like being faithful and consistent, but I also like my sanity, and we're going to work on that. So let's get into email. Why isn't your email list growing? And this was a question that was in the group. It probably wasn't worded in this way, but but here's how I'm going to address it because this is a problem, right? We all, you know, we know we need an email list. And if you don't, you obviously haven't listened to that much of my podcast because I do really like talking about it. Um, and I think it was Valerie who asked this question and she'd been reading my book, Email Lists Made Easy, which is also on my list of things to do. I've been saying for a year, I'm going to update it. I really am. I'm going to. Not tonight. Um, But it was all about how to grow. And it was how to go from installing something on your site to capture email and then actually growing it. And I've talked to people before and heard questions before from people who are trying to grow their list and it's just not happening, even if they're offering a freebie. So let me break it down for you. Okay, there's two problems that may keep you from growing your email list. The first one is eyeballs. And the second one, I didn't think of a fun name for this one. I guess maybe hook. We'll do hook. Um, Okay, so let's talk about eyeballs. Eyeballs, traffic, eyeballs, actual eyeballs on your content. So a lot of people, um, and I've heard this not so much even in the creative writing group, but other Facebook groups, people talk about this and they'll say, hey, I put, you know, all these good opt-ins. I have my whole site optimized. And I actually heard this is almost like verbatim. I had 400 visits to my blog this week and no one signed up for my email list. Okay, so um, here's the reality. The opt-in rate is super low, just generally. You can also Google that after you're done Googling Star Runner. Um, but conversion rates for people hitting your website, they're, they're just not super high. So when you're getting 400 people, and I'm not knocking 400 people, that's 400 people that have looked at your content and that's amazing. However... Um, as an example, I had a post go viral a couple years ago. And by viral, I mean it broke my site. I had over 100,000 page views that day. Um, and when I, you know, I had opt-ins all over my site because, again, email nerd. So I had stuff in the sidebar. There was like a bar up at the top. I even actually made, once I realized, oh, my goodness, this post is going viral. I started seeing friends share it. I don't even think they knew it was my post. <laughs> and it was like everywhere. I uh, put an embedded form in the post and I actually created a freebie like because I like to be fast, y'all. So within 12 hours, I created a freebie and stuck that in there as well. And I think my list grew by like, I don't know, a couple hundred people, maybe. So that percentage is low. So we've got like, you know, and again, I missed part of that traffic. But the next day, it still had like 50,000 page views. Isn't that insane, you guys? So I had all that. And still really didn't grow my list all that much. So just don't be discouraged if you're like, why is no one signing up? Well, you got to get a lot of eyeballs on your site. 
that's a problem. Here's some ways to solve that. Um, you know, so you need help, okay? Um, your site is not gonna, if, so let's talk about your website first and I'll talk about other ways to get eyeballs. But we're talking about your website, to get traffic on your website, you need either really great SEO, search engine optimization, which means you're writing posts that people are already searching for, you're using the keywords, you're putting those keywords in your post, you're putting them in the title, you're using something like Yoast SEO, which is a WordPress plugin, to put those keywords and the keyword phrases, because um, it's not just one word like eggs, it has to be like how to cook easy eggs, something like that, that's a keyword phrase. When I say keyword, I really mean a phrase. Um, you are gonna be putting that as the alt tag in your images and your descriptions for your images. You're gonna be putting that in different headings throughout the blog post and in the snippet that will be shown on Google, um, which again, you do through the Yoast SEO. So that's something, and, and it doesn't just work, uh, you know, like gangbusters, like you have to actually maybe hit on a phrase that people are actually searching for. Maybe they're searching for how to cook easy eggs. I think probably that's a really weird way to phrase it. it was uh, obviously spur of the moment. Um, I did have a video and you can go find this on YouTube. I'm not linking to it, um, but I did a uh, a post on the, my lifestyle blog where I talked about, and I've mentioned this before, where I talked about painting walls with a brush instead of a roller because that's my preferred method and you may think that's dumb and you're right maybe, but that's what I do. So I posted how to do it um, in case other people like me really hate rollers. and. I used keyword optimization. I did some very brief five minute keyword research. So that video, um, I did a video, put it in the blog post. That video has, oh my gosh, how many views does it have? 50,000, I think it passed 50,000. <laughs> and that's all because of the right keywords. And there are people apparently like me who are searching for how to paint their walls without a roller. So that's the importance of keyword optimization. Now, if you're writing a, a blog that goes with like your, author page and you're just talking about book updates, no one is searching for that. So I'm sorry to break that to you, but you're not gonna work well with SEO. If that's the kind of blog you're writing, you're not gonna get traffic to it. And that's okay. That just means you need to get your eyeballs another way. So um, I did say SEO, but you can also be doing social shares and all the kinds of things. Just you can go search for blog growth and page views. I think I even have, if you go to creativewriting.com and plug in page views in the search bar, you'll find some uh, different posts about that. Pinterest and Google are where I get most of my page views um, to posts that are SEO optimized with those keywords I was talking about. Uh, sharing on Facebook, you know, having, because Facebook, so when my post went viral, it was not because I used keywords. It was actually because I just wrote something that emotionally connected with people. So instead of getting a lot of traffic from Google or Pinterest, it got a ton of traffic on Facebook because people were having this emotional connection. It was about why I don't get up before my kids. And there are a lot of moms who apparently also don't, um, but we've been guilted by the moms who do a little bit, a little bit, not all of you. No no judgment on you guys, but I personally have felt victimized by Regina George and also by moms who get up before their kids. So I wrote a post about it and that emotionally connected. So Facebook shares tend to be more emotional. Um, anyway, so you've got to get traffic to your site. Now, if your site's not going to get traffic and you're like, I don't even blog, I just have an author site, then you've got to get the eyeballs somewhere else. This is where sites like Book Funnel come in or Book Cave or uh, Story Origin. Um, man, Great Dane always has to bark during recording time. So uh, those sites, basically you can put a freebie up. Uh, you know, again, this is for, this is geared towards authors, but I'll, I'll tell you guys who are not authors and bloggers or doing something else another way. But finding a site like that where you can do a promo and then doing a group promo, because what happens when you um, do a group promo is that uh, you are getting all those authors, they're all sharing. So like there'll be one, I'm in one right now in June for Sweet Beach Romance or just Sweet Romance or one for Christian. I they come in three in June <laughs> to grow my list and it's grown by over a thousand people this month because it's not just putting your thing up there hoping it gets eyeballs. It's joining with a band of like 20 other authors. Everybody's sharing the link. Everybody's getting more traffic because we've joined together and banded together. So if you can find a way to do something like that with a group and uh, work together to get more eyeballs, it doesn't have to be on our website. It could be somewhere else. And there's actually, you know, you could Google... Um, I'm trying to think, I'm telling you guys to Google a lot of stuff. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, but you can look for you know different Fiverr gigs or something else to drive traffic to those freebies that you might have. And if you're not someone using a site like BookFunnel, um, then I guess,
then I'm not sure what other people are doing right now to grow their lists in other ways, but that's a great way for fiction authors. It also can work with nonfiction. I've seen nonfiction things on BookFunnel and those sites, but think of a way that you can solve that problem of eyeballs, okay? Whatever you can do to get your content on either on a platform where there's eyeballs joining together, maybe you ask a friend, hey, will you email this link out to people? Um, those are all ways, but you've got to figure out that eyeball problem. You've got to get other people looking at your email opt-in, whether that's on your website or something else. And then when it comes to hook, that's the second part, that's actually creating something that people want and that's going to hook them into actually wanting to be on your list. Now, not everybody gives a freebie away and I've got lots of experience with freebies. Fiction, you're giving away fiction. Um, you want to give away what it is you actually create. And so I've had mistakes I've made where I've created freebies that had nothing to do with what I talk about or do. People downloaded them and then I was like, wait, I don't wanna talk about that ever again. It would be like if I created a freebie checklist about that painting video. I'm sure my email list would have grown and they all would have been disappointed when I never ever talked about painting again. So you need to make sure whatever that freebie is you're trying to hook people with, it relates to what you create down the road as well. Fiction create something fiction. Fiction writers, sometimes I see this happen, this mistake where you write for writers instead of your fiction readers. And writers do read. I read a ton. But if you're creating a freebie that's like how to publish your book on Amazon, but actually you're just writing fiction, you're not writing anything about how to self-publish, then that checklist is not going to help you get the right kind of readers, okay? Does that make sense? It's like a natural flow. So first, it needs to be content that lines up with the other content you're producing. What are you going to email out to people? Create a freebie that relates to that. But it also has to be something people want. And I will say that years ago, people were giving away tons and tons of free books. Now, for fiction, I do think that tends to be the best thing. Um, you can also just say, you know, join the list for free books and cheap books and whatever. If you're sending out emails that share free books or share discount books. Um, but in general, fiction, a book or a couple chapters is like the best thing. A novella, um, you know, one of those. I've given away novellas and now I'm, I took my least well-selling book off Amazon and I'm giving that away as a freebie, but it's a full length book. I still like it. It gives people a taste of my characters. Some of those characters come back in later books. So it's a good freebie to give away. Um, nonfiction or bloggers, if you're doing something else, then you want to, again, find that kind of content, but it doesn't have to be a book. Often, I think now that we get so many freebies and it's like a thing that people have been doing long enough, we're kind of tired of books. I actually went to clean out my computer the other day and I found this whole section of things in my download folder that were all freebies, all free books that I downloaded and never opened. And I felt a little bit guilty when I moved them all straight to the trash. <laughs> and I was like, if I haven't read them, and I was like, this is from 2015. I'm not going to read this. I'm not opening this book. However, things that people do open are like one page checklists, um, you know, tips, grocery shopping list if you're doing something that's like a recipe or like a craft or something else. Something quick and easy. I've heard this before and I think this, I've, I found this to be true for myself, a quick and easy win. Sometimes we think we have to give something huge and valuable because all these people are giving giant valuable books and huge things, but value doesn't have to be how long something is, okay? Something can be valuable and be one page. It could be a one page PDF that's not even pretty. It's just in a nice neat font with a white background. Doesn't have to be beautiful. Don't have to spend forever on it. It just has to hook the people in. Hook them in to sign up and then hook them into you and what you're doing. So those are the kind of two parts. The content has to relate, but it also has to be content that attracts people. So if you are out there and you're like, my list isn't growing, the troubleshooting starts with these two things, and it kind of starts and ends there. Eyeballs. Are you getting enough eyeballs on your content? And if not, try to think of ways or ask other people, how are they growing the list? How are they getting eyeballs if it's not blog traffic? And then if you're getting traffic and no one is downloading, then your problem is probably with that hook. It may be that, or if you're getting a lot of people downloading then unsubscribing, you may just be getting freebie seekers and you don't want those people, especially authors, I know a lot of authors talk about, you know, when you give away books, you get, you know, freebie seekers. And that can be true, but I've still found my open rates as my list has grown for fiction have stayed 
really high, above 30% still, which I think is very high when it's, uh, I'm trying to think, maybe it's about 5,000 now. Um, that's, you know, that's a high open rate for something like that. And I don't have a ton of unsubscribes and I do clean it out every so often, but, um, you know, freebie seekers can be a thing, but also if you're not creating content that's in line, like your freebie's not in line with your other stuff, you'll get unsubscribes. So try those two troubleshooting areas. And then this is the last one. So this is my <laughs> little bonus tip. Um, you need to make sure you actually are asking people to join your list and that you're doing it often and consistently, and you need to make sure it's visible. So on your site, you shouldn't just have one opt-in. Now, I don't want 50 pop-ups. That's super annoying, and I know we've all seen those sites. Um, sometimes authors forget to go visit their own sites, or it's like, you know, cashed in or cookied in or whatever, so they don't actually see all the things that happen when a stranger comes. Um, but you need to have, you know, it's not bad to have a, you know, one of those bars along the top. It's not bad to have also something in your sidebar if you have it at the footer of your posts. It's not bad to have it um, on your Facebook page, that sign up area. It's not bad to ask weekly on your Facebook page. Remind people, hey, I have an email list. Twitter, you could do that daily. If you're posting daily other things on Twitter, Twitter moves super fast. You can do that more there. Um, you can do freebies that relate to just one blog post, as long as that, again, goes to content down the line. And that's, uh, people do those a lot, uh, content upgrades and um, things like that. And then you could pin that to Pinterest. And I, I see a lot of people come um, and grow my nonfiction list that way because they see a pretty pin, they go, and then there's a freebie there for them that relates to that. So um, those are ways you need to just make sure you're asking people and making more opt-ins than you think you need because people get sidebar blindness. They don't see the sidebar anymore. Um, you know, pop-ups don't have to be bad. You can put them on a timer, do them as people are leaving. They still tend to be effective in terms of the studies people do. Even if everybody says they hate them, they do still tend to work. But again, optimize your site, ask people consistently to join. So if you're having trouble growing your newsletter, I hope that helps. And I hope that one day, maybe when it's not summer, maybe when you're listening to this in November, you're going to go to creativewriting.com slash 168 and I'm going to have some cool resources for you. Maybe for now, I'll just link to the email resources on my site. And then when I get a chance, I'll create a page. That's what I'm going to do. Yes, I will do that. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Email is a long game. It's not always like a giant thing. So when you hear people like, I grew my list by 10,000 in a month. Well, good for you. That's not normal. So don't <laughs> compare yourself to that guy. Um, it's a really slow growth and that's fine because you want super fans. You don't want every random person off the street to join your email list. You want your raving fans on there. So I'm ending with that and I'm so glad that you listened today. Again, whether it's your first or 168th, I'm so glad that you're here. If you like the music that you are hearing right now, go check out Jasmine Commerce at jasminecommercemusic.com. She is amazing and has lent her beautiful voice to the show. If you'd like to join the free Facebook community, you can head over to creativewriting.com slash community and you can also get my weekly emails. If you want to go to creativewriting.com slash quick fix. And I'm recording this at the very end of June. And so if you join and then you're like, why aren't there emails? It's because it's summer and I've got five kids and today just about pushed me over the limit, y'all. So it's getting real. It's getting real. Summer, we're a month in and it's getting real. Um, so that's, if I disappear, it's for my mental health, you guys. But that's all. Thanks for listening. And now is the time where I tell you to go out and create content that you love and serve your people well.